trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. What's going on, folks? This is Astro. So I'm gonna review the Boy Talks Trash Project, which is basically Garrett, Garrett Ecstasy by himself. Uh, the Dirty Pretty EP. So this is basically like a spin-off of Blood on the Dance Floor. Not so much a spin-off, but more of like an alternative to Blood on the Dance Floor after Garrett Ecstasy left that group in mid-late 2009. So if you don't know the backdrop behind that, basically Davi Vanity, the lead singer of Blood on the Dance Floor, got arrested in the middle of the year of 2009 for sexual assault. And that didn't sit well with uh, Garrett Ecstasy. They were getting ready to put out an album called Oh My Fucking God, which was supposed to come out somewhere in mid-late 2009. And it, that project wound up getting canceled. He wound up, Davi wound up recruiting Javon as Garrett's replacement. And they wound up putting the album Epic out instead. They So Oh My Fucking God got canceled. I would like to hear that album. I wonder how good that project was. It seemed interesting just what... Garrett Ecstasy would have done with Davi in like that album format, but it didn't happen and Davi kind of went to constructing Epic and Garrett went to constructing the Boy Talks Trash Project, the Dirty Pretty EP. And this is a pretty solid rendition of like some real electro kind of pop, crunk core type stuff. It's kind of it had some mild screaming on there considering that Garrett was the screamer and blood on the dance floor. And I would have to say it reminds me of stuff like Lady Gaga, 303, um, Jeffree Star, that type stuff. A little bit of Nicki Minaj, that type stuff. So it's got some good vibes about it. Definitely stuff circa like 2007, 8, and 9 around that territory in terms of what to hear from it and what to expect. This project has like its mechanics to it. And that's definitely the good thing about it. It's got some good vibes going. It's kind of like... Like I said, an alternative to Blood on the Dance Floor, but it has some similarities to Jeffree Star and a good assortment of personality on here. And Garrett Ecstasy is a pretty solid vocalist. I definitely feel like he's got the vocals down. In some cases, I would say he could compete with Davi, and in some, in some stages, he might have even upstaged him with songs like A Slow Motion Moment and The First Move. Those are really good, melodic great singing on there, great melodies on there. There's some great moments. I'm not really sure what the singles are if, or if they're even worse singles, so I'll just go ahead and talk about these. So basically, the first song you hear is the first move, and that's kind of like a club-sounding, kind of crunchy and like synthy kind of club track, like kind of as you first get to the club and you're kind of sp scoping the place out, getting your drinks, initiating with what you're going to talk to and that type stuff. Kind of an, basically what would be like a typical rap club song, something you'd hear from T-Pain or Usher or something like that. It kind of has like a real kind of easy rap or R&B kind of club type feel to it. I really appreciated the first move. Like I said, Garrett's singing on there is pretty good. I mean, it's definitely, he that passes for an, a real substantial R&B single. Um wasn't too big a fan of I Don't Want Anymore. It felt really glitzy and a little bit too glitzy. Like, I like what they were aiming for. It was supposed to be kind of like a disco, electro, pop type number, but it, the glitz was just a little bit too much on that track. It came off as a little bit too flashy and that type stuff, but it, it did have decent singing on there. The next one was Soundtrack to a Car Fire, which to me was kind of like a rave slow jam. I don't know how well... Folks, you, you might be familiar with that depending upon whatever, but to me it kind of came off as like a rave track. Definitely not a dance club as much as a rave, which is kind of more excited dancing and that type of stuff. More kind of ambient and kind of festive kind of dancing, but it felt like a slow jam for a rave. So you could say, well, would that be a fast song for a dance club? But it just feels like a rave kind of song and how it went. I feel like it was... So like I was saying, uh, Soundtrack to a Car Fire has like a nice uh, kind of slow dance, rave type song, slower rave type song. That's basically the vibes I'm getting from it. But it also had really airy and kind of breathy vocals. I liked how just how ambient and kind of dissonant it kind of felt in there. Definitely melodic in a sense and kind of one of the more ones I would say. these All of these songs really feel like they could be played in out and about spots. This is really not intended for at the house 
unless there's some sort of get together or like smoke session or something like that type vibes. But it, it really the whole way through has a pretty exuberant and kind of stepping out for the night kind of feel. Definitely a nighttime feel at that. I mean, it could be day, but it really has more of like an evening, 1030 at night, 945 at night type stuff. Really, that's how that's the kind of context I got from it. And slow motion movement. This one is one of the most vicious tracks on here. This instant quick tempo beat is very grabbing. This real synthy and kind of just real. It's tough to kind of describe it, but it, it has a good chemistry and good combination for it. I would definitely have to say if you heard if you've heard like a typical club song that is just quicker and real kind of. You want to dance and get up and move like that kind of real quickly. That's kind of what that sort of vibe kind of is from that song. On top of that, like I feel like Garrett Ecstasy did a great job with the vocals. Just real melodic, easy. It's entrancing almost just the way of how good that song was. It's just really a gem. Probably, I would recommend this one as a single. This competes with like Blood on the Dance Force stuff on some of their best days and better days on there. I would definitely say that it's you know such a, a real real excellent kind of song right there to kind of have and uh, then ps i hate you kind of takes it back to just like a regular club or dance club type stuff like i feel like first moves was kind of more of like a club but this is more of like a dance floor someplace with like a dance floor and stuff that's just not maybe not into like rave and kind of like euro pop in like a rave sense but this kind of you know the music that flow rider would do and Katy Perry sometimes would do that type stuff, you know, LMFAO in a light sense, Katy Perry flow right of that type, club type bop right there. I enjoyed it. I mean, really, I feel like those are, you know, good moments. I felt like the melodies were good on there also. So yeah, overall, I would have to say that this project has a lot of concoctions about it, and it's definitely a good shot in the arm if you're looking for just like a Friday loud pack to kind of get you through 35 minutes or a couple hours depending upon how much you listen to it really has like some good combinations and overall like stellar kind of points of interest as far as trying to do it now it's low key I'm not sure if it has a CD out and how easy it is to get apart from just getting like the mp3 format of it but I do would definitely appreciate the effort the execution the impressions and the overall chemistry that this project had in terms of what it was aiming for in a night sense it's definitely great nightclub material easy weekend numbers and you know the shortcomings are i mean this guy you know it's not quite as because he's not rapping the shortcomings if you don't like him as a lyricist are not quite as exampled because it's not really it's not necessarily wrapped to you and stuff so it's just kind of more in like a jeffree star type vibe but I appreciated it just kind of within the context of what happened there. I do wish that there would have been, I do wish that there would have been more Boy Talks trash. I definitely feel like this one EP, I mean, I saw that he might have done like standalone singles and spare songs here and there and that type stuff. But in terms of like another body of work, the Dirty Pretty EP is basically about it, which is pretty disappointing. I would have to say Garrett, I mean, I feel like Garrett almost might feel washed up after Blood on the Dance Floor. I mean, Davi and Javon were to keep on going and such, but I kind of feel like Garrett kind of got left in the dust. I mean, he attempted, this was his attempt to kind of break even, but it's kind of shameful that the quality of this project didn't translate to further success because he just kind of became, I guess, just like an afterthought, which is pretty disappointing. I don't like the sound of that just because this was great music here. I mean, this could compete with Blood on blood on the dance floor and it was a great alternative to it so that's kind of disappointing but i'm going to give this album a nine out of ten i definitely felt like me liking four out of five songs so basically out of the five songs on here the only song i didn't really enjoy was just i don't want anymore and i told you about the reason why behind that so it's just kind of four out of five is pretty excellent just out of the sheer effort and enjoyment that's why i upped the score to a nine rather than just an eight but i feel like it's an overall quality uh, concoction here there's just no real terrible slight I mean it's just kind of I mean even I don't want any more could somehow kind of be good depending upon how much you like the glitziness of it but um, I would have to say that the overall feeling towards it it just has a very kind of charming kind of ready to go out kind of energy and the thing about it is is it doesn't really even have drinking songs it's not really like 
quite as flirty as it could be and not quite as drug induced and quite as raunchy as like Jeffree Star is. So it's just kind of is kept within like a pretty much light rated R setting in terms of like, I would even almost say PG 13, just within the context of just being kind of like Katy Perry esque and Lady Gaga esque our electro R and B type stuff that works extremely well for Garrett ecstasy. So it's just too bad that that didn't, come through more but yeah so the social score i would give it i would say it's pretty solid like a six and a half just because it needed a single needed a music video but the music is so good if you like blood on the dance floor this is a great alternative to immediately go for and all these songs are outgoing so that's kind of the concept there like i said for the future it seemed like garrett ecstasy really kind of vanished and i've made a couple of vlogs jackal gold kick and i've made a couple of vlogs denoting where we think the guy went. I mean, apparently he developed a bar and kind of sell, he, he is a bartender and that type stuff. But, you know, some folks, if you see him at a bar, something like that, you should totally try to persuade him to come back to Boy Talks Trash because it's definitely necessary. I mean, he's not too much older. I would assume he's probably still in like his mid, late thirties or early forties or something. So there's plenty of more room left to kind of put out more tracks even if it's been a, a solid decade or so since he's done music but you know that's kind of the concept there